Hello everyone, this is Jay from Python in Office. Welcome to part 2 of the series on how to create a fully functional Excel file using just Python. In this channel, we explore ways to use Python to make our office jobs and lives easier. If that's something interests you, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any future video updates. In part 1 of the series, we got introduced to the Excel X Writer library. Today, we'll take a look at how to use Python to recreate some of the most common and useful features in Excel, including the name range, links, and formulas. So the example worksheet that we're going to use Python to create is a cash flow projection model to calculate people's accumulated wealth. It's a fairly simple calculation and because this is not a finance tutorial, I won't go into the details. At a high level, we project a person's income and expenses out for a number of years, calculate the annual savings or investable income every year, and assume the person saves all the money and use it for investment. The investment will continue to grow at an assumed rate, and we'll be able to calculate how much money the person has in X number of years. Let's get to the modeling part. So we first import Excel Rider library, as well as the utility function Excel row column to cell. This is the utility function where we can convert the cell coordinates, the row column notation into a A1 notation. In X, we create a workbook and name it WB. Then we add a worksheet called input and we name that worksheet WS1. Let's actually go ahead and create the second worksheet. And we're gonna name this worksheet as calculation. So we're going to use a dictionary to store some input parameters. And these are just some values that we'll be using for our calculation. Then we also need two counters for row and column. We'll set both to start from the value one. Basically, these two counters will help us loop through cells when we write Excel formulas. So I have this already completed Excel file at the background just to use it as a reference when we are trying to write cells or formulas into Excel and we'll try to recreate this file from scratch. So first of all, let's try to write these input parameters into the Excel. We're going to loop through the variables dictionary keys. So essentially we're writing the dictionary keys inside one column and then the actual values inside the column beside the keys. So let's write the keys first. WS1, write, row, column, and the value i. So i here is the variables keys. And then let's write the actual value. So it's gonna be in the same row, but then column plus one. We wrote the keys in this column, and we want to write the values just beside it. So the next column plus one. And we can access the values, variables, and fit the key in there. So now we have that, and because we need to loop through to the next row, so we go row plus equal one. And if you are new to Python, uh, the plus equal sign is same as row equal row plus one. It's just a short way to write the same code. And here, I hope you see that why we're not using the A1 notation in the write function, because if we want to write, say, column B, and then the next column, column C, it's just so much easier to calculate the rows and column numbers than coming up with an algorithm that can go from the letter A to the next letter, letter B. So that's why we use the row and column notation. So before we go further, I want to show you how to define names in our Excel workbook. And you're probably already familiar with how to create names inside Excel. So basically, you just go to Formulas and Name Manager. So here, let's say you can create a new name like this. You can create a name and refer the name to point to a cell or to a range or to a value. So we can actually achieve the same thing using just Python. And it's actually very easy to do. Let me show you how. The workbook object has a method called define name, and we can use that. WB is the workbook, define name, and inside the define name function, we're going to pass in two arguments. The first argument is the name that we want to use. So we're going to assign names for 
these three variables. Now, because we're doing a cash flow projection, so we'll be using these variables quite often. It's easier when they have names to refer to. Income increase. And we want to point the income increase to this value right here, the, the 0 0.05. So it's similar to how we would use the right function to write formulas. The second argument, we just pass in a string that's just literally the Excel string that is pointing to that cell. So this string will say equal to input. And this exclamation mark just means the input is a tab. And then we're going to pass in the cell name, which is C5. And we're going to use absolute references because if you don't, it's going to do something weird and doesn't point to the right cell. And we're going to copy that and create another name. And we're going to call this investment ink return, uh, which is the second, second number here, 0 0.06. Change that to C6. And again, one more. We're going to call it inflation and change it to cell C7. So here we created three Excel names and then pointed them to a cell. We can also create a name that just referred to a specific value. And it's actually very easy. It's just like this. Uh, you can just say equal to 100, just like that. So later on, when we open up the Excel file and go to the name manager, we'll see this test name inside the Excel file with a value of 100. So next, I'm actually gonna reset the row counter because we incremented the row variable by a few times previously in the loop. I'm gonna reset it back to one. We are done on this input tab and then we're moving on to the next tab, the calculation tab. So as you can see, we basically just brought the information from the input tab over to the calculation tab with the only difference is the calculation tab here is linking to that input tab. So how do we do links? In Excel, we often need to link values from one place to another, maybe from another tab or another file. By now, you probably already guessed how to do that. We just need to use the right method. In the second argument, or in the argument where we write the formulas, we just input the tab name, exclamation mark, as well as the cell address. So we're going to work on this little section here. We're going to do another for loop. And now because we're moving on to the calculation tab, we want to use worksheet number two. Row, column, I. So this line is writing the dictionary keys, which are these names, number of years, income expense, etc. And then we're going to write the values. But instead of writing the hard code values, we're going to write formulas such that these values will be linking to the input tab. So it's going to be in the same row, but column plus one. We're essentially moving from this column to this column right here. Because we have previously set column equal to one, row equal to one. So the starting point is actually cell B2. So in Excel, when you link to another tab or another cell, you have to use the A1 notation. You can't use the row and column notation because Excel doesn't understand that. How do we convert this number coordinates into the C4 or A1 uh, notation? And we're going to use that Excel row call to cell utility function. We want to say equal to, and it's gonna say input. Remember, this is the tab name. Let me actually show this. We'll have a better understanding on how to do this. So essentially in this cell, so right now we're writing to this cell, C2. And in C2, we want to input equal input C4. So input and then C4. But we can just type C4 because we have a loop to do. And we have to come up with a way to mathematically calculate the different cell locations so that we can use it for a loop. So this should be C2 because we're working with the first, the first cell here. This cell right here, or the row column plus one, this is one and two. And this is basically the cell C2. So we have the row and column coordinates. So we can convert it by using Excel row column to cell utility function. So that's gonna be row and column plus one. We can use this, but the thing is, we can just use it like this. What we need is an F string, and we're gonna 
to use the curly bracket. So essentially when you use an F string and you add this curly bracket inside the F string, F string is gonna evaluate it. For example, if you pass a variable, then it's gonna return the value of the variable. If you pa pass a function in our case, it's gonna evaluate that function and then return the results. So we know this function will return C2 to us. And then the next step is we need to increment the row counter by one so that we can move down to the next row. So it says W2 not defined. Oh, right here, yeah, I made a typo above. Let's fix that. WS2. So obviously it doesn't like us creating another tab with the same name that already exists in the spreadsheet. So what we can do is we can simply just assign this to the, the wrong variable that we, we were using uh, here. Uh, we underscore two. Again, I'm gonna show you that this is indeed C4. So this one is supposed to be one and then this is also, uh, sorry, uh, this will evaluate to C2. All right, so now I'm gonna rerun this loop. Now you know how to write links into Excel using Python. And if you want to link to external files, it's the same method. I'm uh, not gonna show it here. You can try that yourself. So now let's move on to making the formulas. And I'm gonna switch to Excel and quickly walk through what we need to do for the formulas. So in finance, we call this type of uh, calculation a, a projection. And most of the time, the projection is associated with the time frame. So let's say uh, here we have 10 years and in year number, uh, such as number five, um, we can see in the formula that uh, the value in year number five is actually depend on depend on the income from year number four. So essentially for this income projection, we are increasing the income every year by uh, 5% and just compounding that over the course of 10 years. So this kind of projection calculation is essentially how we do loops in Excel. And to replicate these formulas in Python, we pretty much just mimic what we would do when writing these formulas in Excel. So let's actually first write the column names and then the year into the Excel sheets. So back to Python. Here are the column headers for the calculation. So because we're writing these column headers in a row, we can use the method write row. If we were to create an Excel spreadsheet that looks exactly like the one that's showing in the background, I'm gonna input this into cell B10. That means row number nine and column number one. And then we can pass the list. So then it's gonna write this list into Excel starting from cell B10 and then going across like that. And then let's write the number of years starting from zero to nine. It, if you prefer your projection starting from one to 10, that's okay, it doesn't really matter. You probably guessed we have a right row and then therefore we also have a right column. So it's gonna be again nine, one. Uh, it's actually gonna be 10 because we shifted down one, one row and it's gonna be from zero to nine. So this zero to nine is actually, it's actually the number of years we have here. So I'm just gonna copy this uh, key. And what I'll do is I'll just do range and variables number of years so the variables number of years will return 10 and then uh, just a range of 10 like that what i'm going to do now is because we've done quite a lot of work with the workbook already so we, we probably should check whatever we have done to make sure there's no errors so i'm gonna save and close the workbook and check the results all right so here is my workbook i'm gonna open it to check the results Right, so first of all, we have two tabs. One is named input, the other is calculation. And then we have our input parameters with values. And these are all hard code values. And remember that we created three names or named range or whatever you want to call it. Uh, these are the three name ranges. Now, if you go to the name manager, remember we also created another name that we set to the value 100. And that is this value here. So if we just equal to test, then it's gonna return 100 in Excel. Moving on to the next tab, calculation. So here we have the same parameter uh, names. And here we have the links. 
this is our calculation table. We've only laid out the structure, the columns, and then the rows. Uh, we haven't done any calculations yet. So, so far, it seems like what we've done is correct. So we're going to continue. So if you look at these formulas, it, it's essentially just taking the previous value and then multiply it by a factor. And it's the same thing here. It means that we'll be using pretty much the same formulas when calculating these two projections. To avoid writing the same code multiple times, we can first create a helper function, which we'll call it annual increase. So back into Python, let's define a helper function called annual increase. And we're going to allow this function to take a few arguments. The first one will be a worksheet, and then the starting row, the starting column, and the end is the number of years, and then the initial value for the projection, and the name range. This is just the factor that we want to apply to the values for the projection. So the reasons that we use worksheet as an argument is that if you want to write two different worksheets, then having this as an argument makes things simpler. Now, in terms of what this helper function does, it basically just write this whole column right here. It writes only one column at a time. So if we want to write the formulas for income and expenses, we have to call this helper function twice because it basically just writes from this value down here to this value or down to the nth value, whatever n value that you use. So we're going to write the first value here. For example, it's the 50,000 and we're going to write star row, star column, and its initial value. Once we have that initial value in place, we can start our loop for i in range because we've already written the initial value in the cell, so we have to minus one. And then we're going to write to the next row, same column, start column, because it's the next row, so we, we want to plus one, because we are using a loop. We can use the i as the counter instead of creating another uh, counter variable, because here uh, it's a range, so it will start from zero, which fits the purpose perfectly here. So plus i, and the starting column, because we're writing inside one column, so we don't have to increment the start column. And then we pass in this formula here. So it's going to be, and again, we're going to be using an F string because we are going to need to use uh, the conversion function again to convert the row and column notation into the A1 notation because we have to use the A1 notation when we are using Excel to make formulas. So essentially the formula will be previous value or previous cell multiplied by one plus this factor. And because it's the previous value, so we can use start row plus i, because right now we are in start row. It's called a typo there. Start row plus i uh, plus one plus i. So we just need to use the previous row and same column. This here will give us the previous cell address, and then we're going to uh, multiply one plus. So what we what do we need? We need the income increase name. From Excel and that's where the name range will come into play so essentially we, we can pass in different names inside this argument and then that name will be passed into here all right let's run that so now we have this helper function and let's use it to project out the income and expenses so we'll be writing this to worksheet 2 and the starting row is row number 11 but it'll be number 10 uh, due to the zero starting index in Python and the column is 2. Then for n, the number of years, we can simply just use a variable number years. This is the number of years we want to pass in. Next value, initial value, and then we can also use the dictionary. It's going to be income, and the name range is going to be income increase. Okay, so I made a typo here. It's supposed to be variables. Seems okay, no warning so far. So the first line, we, we wrote the income line, and then the second and the next line, we're going to write the expense. So it's the same thing here, same, same starting row, but then it's the next column. So we're going to increment this uh, uh, column number by one. And the variables, this will be expense. The factor that we're multiplying by is called inflation. So we're going to change this name range to inflation. Seems okay, so I'm gonna uh, save this file again to see if everything is indeed okay. So I made the mistake there because 
we have previously closed the workbook and then now we're trying to close it again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, copy all these code into a separate Python script and then have that run again so that we can continue. All right, so here, this is the code that I just copied over from uh, the Python console. I've now saved it into a separate script so that we can just run it over and over without worrying about screwing up anything, All right? Seems no problem. Now let's open the file. All right, so here are the two columns that we just wrote the formulas for, uh, the income and expenses. And if you check the links, then you can see that we're basically taking the previous value and then multiply by the one plus uh, the factor that's saved as a named range or or names inside Excel. So switching back to the completed sample Excel file, again, we're having this completed Excel file in the background just because we have something that we can see, we can reference to, and then it's easier to walk through the tutorial. So the next step is calculate the investable income, which is just the difference between the income and then the expense, obviously. And for this one, uh, we can just use a loop and take the difference between the two columns. So in this loop, we're essentially writing to column number five, which is uh, number four due to the zero index. So zero, one, two, three, four, this column. We take the values from the third column, the income column, subtract the fourth column from the expenses, put this last column, cumulated wealth. The calculation is a little bit different from the way the helper function calculates. For this one, we need to kind of grow uh, the previous year balance. And then we also need to add the current year contribution to the investment pool. So we're going to be writing the first value first. This just equals to the first year investable income balance and we're going to write it into uh, this column and now we're going to look through the rest of the calculation. Again here we minus one from the number of years is because we've already written the first year value. Alright so for this loop we'll be writing into this column and the formula says take the previous cell times one plus the investment return plus the current year contribution. Same as what is showing here, previous year balance times a factor and then plus the current year contribution. So now we've completed all the calculation columns. Let's save the file and run again. No errors. So now we have the investable income is just the difference between income and expense. And the, and the cumulative wealth, well done, there's, there's a typo there. I'll fix that later, up to this point. I hope it's clear to you that how to use Python to write formulas and links and create names in Excel. We're going to stop here and in the next part we'll be adding some formats, for example like colors, fonts, cell borders, as well as adding charts. So you can turn this plain boring looking Excel calculation file into something that looks like this. Alright, so that's it for today. I will see you in the next one.